Hey guys, it's Joe with VMP. Today I want to cover something that comes up a lot both in email tuning and when we're doing dyno tuning on Coyote swap cars and even just dyno tuning on some regular cars. Arguably one of the most important sensors on a, a late model Mustang, the mass airflow sensor and the, the way that air comes across it. So here we have a, a 2004 Mustang GT with a Coyote swap. This is one of our uh, employee's cars. He's just kind of trying to get everything wrapped up from a tuning standpoint on it so we can finish cleaning everything else up. I figured it was a good case study, if you want to call it that, of why the mass airflow sensor is so important on these cars and why you need to make sure that you're keeping the airflow that comes across the map in a relatively steady state to where you don't have turbulent airflow coming across it and weird transition periods or when your engine cooling fan comes on or when you're going down the road at 50 or 60 miles an hour. So if you look in the engine bay of this car, you'll see it has aftermarket cold air intake. Um, it's a JLT 123 millimeter cold air intake with their new style filter and a, um, a stock mass air sensor. Um, when this kit is used on a 2011 to 14 Mustang GT, it comes with a, a heat shield, um, is what most people refer to it as. A, basically, the, to me, the biggest function of that shield is to keep turbulent airflow from coming across the map. Through all this, you guys may be wondering, well, why do I need to care about this and what exactly does it do? Essentially, it's one of like four sensors that calculate everything that comes into the ECU and there's a lot of inferred tables that are based on the mass air sensor and then a lot of calculations that are based on that. So you don't want to have any error in one of your your root variables, if we want to call it that, in a calculation because that skews every other calculation off in the ECU. So in stock form, the mass air sensor on a what we'll call a 2011 to 2014 Mustang GT is in a closed air box with a, a paper filter that Ford designed, engineered to make sure that it gets the, the smoothest signal it possibly can so that it can most accurately calculate air mass coming into the cylinders so that fueling can be good, so that transient fueling can be good, so that all the emissions and everything do what they need to do and all of the calculations are correct. When you put an aftermarket cold air intake on a car, you need to make sure there's some sort of heat shield on it or a air deflector, if you want to call it that, especially with swap cars. I get a lot of swap cars that we do here that come in with no heat shield or no, no type of air deflection or filter isolation. And that's a problem with a lot of swap cars because they have open engine bays that fan wash is usually rampant in or like a, an open grill that airflow can flow directly into and then come into the air filter weird and hit the mass airflow sensor at an angle that it doesn't normally hit it at. And that screws up all the calculations in the ECU, can lead to drivability issues like throttle surging, stalling, idle surge. It's usually pretty easy to solve with a little bit of logic and a little bit of a ingenuity. Um, if you look at something basic that we're gonna do here as an example to you guys of like why this matters and what can happen if you have turbulent airflow across a mass airflow sensor. If you look right here, we have a just a rudimentary piece of cardboard here to help deflect the fan wash from his setup from hitting the air filter at a, at a strange angle and creating a type of uh, kind of like a ram air effect coming across the filter and changing the way that the air flows around the mass air sensor. So I'll see if we can throw a little bit of a, a graphic or something in here, but think of this as if it's see-through. You have air coming in straight from this little conical section right here, or relatively straight, and then it comes around the volume and comes in and comes in pretty straight. If you get airflow coming into the, the filter from this direction and it bounces off of here, creates a little bit of a swirl as it comes past the mass, all of your calculations for fueling, for load, for spark, everything gets thrown off by that. And like I said before, it can cause weird stuff with the way your car runs. So we're gonna start this car up, we're gonna let it come down to a steady idle. And then once it's steady idling, we're gonna pull this piece of cardboard out. And with no one in the car, no tune changes, no anything, you're gonna see what the possible drawbacks are of having a, an air filter that isn't properly isolated from turbulent airflow can, can do in terms of the way the car runs. And then if the, if the car doesn't stall from that, we're gonna slide the cardboard back in and show you the difference like A to B between just a little bit of uh, airflow mitigation to airflow doing whatever it wants underneath the engine bay.
So now what we're going to do is we're going to show you exactly what that looks like on uh, my end of things on a data log on my computer screen. So what you can see in the video here is that this red line up here is engine RPM, this purple line is MAF signal and period. The air load right here is basically the calculation for cylinder filling that the ECU calculates based on the mass airflow and a few other parameters. And this bottom line right here is throttle angle. So what you see here is that this red line, you can see the dashed reference line, idle is relatively stable right here. And about right here, where is it? Right here is where we pull the cardboard out in the video that you're watching. And you can see that the RPM starts surging and then your math period along with that starts surging. And then every other calculation in the ECU starts surging. So your throttle starts waving, your air load calculation starts getting skewed by both the engine surging and by the, the changes in airflow across the math and then eventually it gets so bad in this specific case that the car actually stalls. Being that our sales and support guys have experience with dealing with customers like this that have both came in and customers that we've had via email that have sent us engine bay photos and data logs and videos and stuff, this is something we're, we're very familiar with. We know how to solve the problem. If you, if you have any questions or are looking for directions to go to help keep issues like this from coming up with your build, reach out to us either at sales at vmptuning.com or support at vmptuning.com or even by phone. So if you want to see more technical content like this or even just videos of the stuff we do around here at the shop, um, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on our social media platforms like uh, Facebook and Instagram.